Hello everyone, welcome back to a very exciting episode of CSK News. I hope you guys all enjoy. And why I'm so excited today is first of all, I've had way too much caffeine. Uh, second of all, you guys did finally clarify what we'll be saying in the future of this channel in terms of MIBR or MEBR. There were a total of 500 plus comments on yesterday's episode, as well as my Twitter poll results do show. In the future, I'll be pronouncing it as MIBR. And for those of you guys who don't care, thank you very much, because it might slip out as MEBR on accident. But there's a lot of great stories. And on top of that, today's episode is also sponsored. So before we get into sponsorship, that kind of stuff, as well. Huge shouts to that. It's going to be awesome. Maybe in the future have more sponsors, but thank you all for the great support throughout the week. Without you guys, I couldn't have sponsors. But let's get into the big story though, and that is of course all around rumors of MIBR's future. Now, I could not cover it in the last episode. We actually had a tweet from Cold Zero on screen for all of you, which does translate into saying, stay calm everyone. He's going to be staying in MIBR. Now, no one really doubted that because of course they need him to go to the major. They need that trio of Fallen, Fern, Cold Zero to actually secure that spot. The big question though is, is this like the Shroud instance where of course it was many many months ago actually last year we had shroud where he originally came out on stream and said he's thinking about retiring and then all of his teammates automatic and nothing at the time were like no 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 he didn't mean it guys he didn't mean it take that back he eventually took it back said he was joking within two weeks of that statement of him saying he was joking he actually did retire all this has the same vibes around that i think there are certainly some struggles in the mibr roster and i'm sure uh, many sources out there decay and nelf confirmed those frustrations inside that team so it's no doubt that yes cold zero will probably stay in the MIBR roster until September when the face it major rolls around but after that changes are certainly bound to happen and where he'll go right now speculation does point towards Liquid he would join up with former teammate Taka over there and of course Liquid all North American teams right now could undergo changes as well so speculation does point towards an MIBR roster change probably coming for Cold Zero in the, in the way way future but even closer than that we could have a big Cloud9 roster change also involving the MIBR roster and that is of course with most recent rumors revolving around Cloud9 who they've been practicing with and it's not it's obviously very well known you guys heard in yesterday's rumors that Targ was considering going to join his former teammate Stewie 2k on that MIBR roster he would replace them before the major and he'd be replacing bolts on the roster and of course I said previously this would leave cloud nine absolutely broken no longer an IGL no longer a fourth or a fifth member permanently and that roster could really kind of be confused as to what they're going to do in the future will they break up will they disband that's the big question but it has been confirmed guys cloud nine has been practicing with two brand new players to possibly be replaced not only the IGL role in FNS who is currently on their bench but as well as that Tarek rifle role and those two players were apparently former Fnatic Golden and alongside that former Mouse Sports and a former Cloud9 stand-in Sticko were actually all confirmed practicing with the guys and with their coach Valens yesterday so it does seem that Cloud9 is looking to make a roster change before the major and this is absolutely in huge news what do you guys think about this of course a lot of worries out there already about North American teams ESL Cologne was the first tournament in eight months time where we saw no North American teams and no no North American players even make the playoffs and with this kind of result with Cloud9 going downhill if they do actually have a roster change like this it's seemingly for the future only liquids are real only shot for a North American team to actually make any playoffs or perform any any of any decent result at the major so it does seem for sure right now guys Cloud9's Targ will be leaving for MIBR the only question mark is when will that happen and will he replace Bolts and the big question mark as well for MIBR is will they change then after the major of course the major is still about a month and a half two months away a lot of things can change change with that and of course re good results and good money can keep a guy on a team for a long amount of time and things can certainly change but those are where roster rumors do point to and super thankful for all of you guys who actually were here the last two episodes my birthday is actually this weekend I do turn 32 on Saturday I'll be visiting my sister in Chicago and thanks to my sponsor Elute on screen for all of you because they actually uh, actually reached out to pay for a few of me and my sister Jenny's drinks this weekend for our birthday huge shouts to them if you guys have not checked out Elute before over 140,000 followers on Twitter a great way to earn uh, uh, points actually in their case is actually gems earn these gems to actually unlock multiple ways to withdraw you can withdraw to PayPal eBay Amazon uh, OP skins many other web methods you can play video games do surveys all to earn free gems and it's a free way of earning money unfortunately enough you cannot withdraw to skins anymore given the recent trade bans and so on and so forth but a, a crazy amount of ways to withdraw and also a great website guys and an even better team out there and huge shouts to them to actually sponsor this episode if you guys use my referral code down below you get a free 5,000 gems and feel free to comment down below what do you guys think about the service and I can pass on any comments you guys have to that team over there for future updates so huge shouts for the sponsor guys again they're gonna be paying for me and Jenny's drinks this weekend and I cannot wait but now on to finish off today's episode of CSK News because there is still so much more happening yeah I'll take the hat off for this next story guys just don't blame it for my hat hair I know I have ugly hair you guys have pointed that out in the past but in really big news out there just clarified actually the most breaking news of this entire episode is Valve's obviously their new latest CSGO updates on screen for all of you but most importantly of course the first of which 
which is panorama UI compatibility updates. There's been a lot of kinks and bugs in the game so far, and those are slowly going to get fixed in the future. I'm, I'm definitely assured of that. But most importantly, tucked away at the very bottom, some huge updates, guys. First of which, uh, it was actually, I think about a month and a half ago, everyone in the Netherlands was not allowed to actually trade on the Steam market. They are now re-enabled to trade. But just above that, guys, even more importantly, people in the Netherlands, as well as Belgium, are now restricted from opening CSGO cases. Thanks to my friend Adam from Belgium. He actually showed us a screenshot of exactly what it looks like. You can no longer open cases, any in-game cases, sticker capsules as well, if you are from Belgium or from the Netherlands. And that is about 28 million people total in population. Who knows exactly what percentage of them actually play CSGO. But a huge hit and a huge, I guess you could say, maybe a leniency towards the future of what other governments out there might do. This is actually in big news. Leave a comment down below what you guys think about this. Belgium, Netherlands, the first two countries out there to actually ban in-game cases. And it could come soon to other European countries. And this could be, it could spell trouble for the future of CSGO. Let's just cross our fingers. Although I'm not a huge fan of CSGO cases, it would definitely hurt the game in a way that we have never seen before. So let's not see any more of it. But I guess congrats. It's a great way to stop gambling and that such thing. What do you guys think about it? There's definitely two sides of the story. But also another big news out there. We had several accusations ever since ESL Cologne and of course the rise of Smuya on that big roster. Several accusations going towards him and his formerly VAC banned accounts. Face it, Mikey did come forward and say that all the Face It impersonators were impersonators of Smuya. They were ever, never actually legitimately tied to his accounts. And all those former impersonators who had ties to VAC ban accounts were just trying to impersonate Smuya. He does not actually have any history with VAC ban. So Smu God, keep doing you, man. And also in very big news, talking about Valve and Steam, apparently some leaked uh, PI data, API data actually was uh, found on the internet a couple weeks ago. I think someone actually sent me this information and it is now official out there. Some leaked data out there on Steam servers and actually revealing information on the top played games out there in terms of all Steam games. So of course, things like Fortnite aren't going to be on here. Uh, other top leading games, League of Legends, uh, Overwatch are not going to be involved right now. But all the top Steam or slash Valve games are on screen for all of you in terms of overall player counts. And what really worried me, first of all, you see CSGO is number two. You also see Counter-Strike Source on there. So it's kind of impressive. But what really worries me, of course, as of right now, I think the average player base in terms of active users for CSGO is just over 400,000. Now you see over 40 million accounts actually made for CSGO. And this means one of two things. First of which, it could mean, of course, the extensive amount of cheating accounts created just to cheat in CSGO is kind of frightening. But also being number two on the list, but only having an active player base of just over 400,000, this could mean a tantalizing future for the for the future of CSGO. Because a game like PUBG is actually below CSGO in the 30s of millions of accounts created, but their active player base is much higher. So I really do fear this is actually a tendency for the future of CSGO to be kind of looked at as a dying game. What do you guys think about that? And speaking of dying brands out there or brands that are trying to reach out, and let me clarify as well, I'm sure OP Skins has great things in mind. They need to do whatever they need to do to actually make money and stick around. And they once were an amazing service for CSGO. But you look at their latest updates, guys, and it does seem, in, in fact, for their express trade, OP Skins is now looking to actually sell real life items like, like sneakers and stuff on their express trade, which again, this could be a cool feature. I could be totally wrong here, but it just seems like a bit of a reach to try and stay in business. But again, I could use it in the future. It does seem like a very interesting update. What do you guys think about this? I, we've seen a multi, multi hundred million dollar business in OP Skins in the past month or so lose most of their business and they are now going to use express trade. Yes, you can use your OP Skins currency to buy physical items. So very interesting. I hope to see how it does do well, but I, maybe I'll use it. And also in a very sad story out there, it was a couple days ago, we had Team Property. That's actually the former team of people like Jay-Z Walkings from Renegades, as well as uh, JW's little brother, Lim Pone, were on this team. They had somewhat of a promising future, maybe in a, a Mountain Dew League future, but they did have financial backing, which is pretty big. A couple days ago, the team did actually let them go because of, of course, poor results being a, a big reason to let teams go nowadays, and they can no longer financially pay them out. Although Lim Pone took to Twitter to actually have a long post about the struggles of being a very dedicated IGL on the scene. He'll continue to look for jobs out there in the CSGO scene as an IGL. And also part of his post apparently actually leaked some information or I'm sure he did it very, very much on purpose where apparently property paid these guys out for part of their contracts, but not the entire contracts. I'm not sure if video game uh, lawyers been actually notified about this. So he kind of goes on to a lengthy post. I'll link it down below for all of you about the struggles of being a dedicated IGL in the CSGO scene right now and how hard it is, ironically enough, for an IGL, the most sought after role to actually find a stable team to back the 
them up. Now also, very last in today's episode of Cisco News, guys, some very exciting news. When I do come back on Sunday or Monday, we're going to finalize a lot more teams for the actual major qualifier, but two teams from America, the first two teams will actually be uh, in the actual major qualifier who have not already qualified, have been finalized, and it will be complexity alongside, of course, Rogue we announced last episode. It'll be Hiko back to the major for the first time in almost two years. Thanks for the correction yesterday's episode, guys. He was there in early 2017. It'll also see Kadian back there for the first time in four years, and we will see two complexity members returning to the major as well in Stanislaw and Shazam, and they might even see, we're going to find out the European closed qualifier uh, for the minor does finish up, I think in a couple weeks. We're going to see if their former teammates, Optic Gaming, do qualify, which they have a much harder route to do. But again, it's be really cool to see, not only do we have some veterans returning to the major in these two teams, Rogue and Complexity, but we also have a lot of new players going, and I cannot wait to see how they perform. So of course, the American teams out there are not going to be looking too hot in terms of competition-wise, but they definitely have a chance to actually make our top 16 in our official major, and I cannot wait to see how they do it. I just have the biggest forehead and the ugliest haircut of all. I don't even, I just don't ever, I think I'm going to shave my head again because that was like a lot easier to deal with. As always guys, hope you all enjoyed this week of CSGO News. If you guys did, feel free to leave a comment down below. Thank you all for your amazing support. I really cannot thank you guys enough. It's always awesome to see every, you know, once in a while to see a sponsor and actually a uh, huge shout to them again if you guys want to use my referral code down below. And I cannot wait to celebrate my birthday this week. So again, I'm turning 32. I know I, I just, I'm just, it, time flies. So thank you all for watching guys. I will see you all as well. Don't don't worry, I do have pre-recorded episodes for tomorrow and Saturday, and I'll see you guys either Sunday or Monday. Hope you guys all enjoy. As always, my name is JMIQ, and I'll see y'all then. All right, goodbye, guys.